needed this one tonight in Sacramento. Yeah. Happy Easter Sunday if you celebrated. Kings did not lay an egg tonight. The Kings bounce back with a win. How are we doing on the Sunday night? What up, dudes? Hey. Hey, Morgan. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, Kings. Man, after a tough 48 hours, we were all wondering... What were the Kings going to look like? We knew they've struggled against teams below 500. It didn't shake us that the Jazz were missing key guys. It didn't shake me that Morgan, you've got like a lash that's just about to fall off. I just, is it's it fake? Kind of, yeah, it's dude. just distracting. You it's can't like, tell. Oh, I can tell. I can. Well, not in this. No, no, I can tell. I know I, it's because I'm not a professional makeup artist. I don't know how to do it. Can I take it off? It's yeah. Just, what? I could take it off, but you can do it. Well, or can we fix it. No, I have to look it's at your, just one I, of those things. You know what? I don't have to look at your face. It just was, I was going on this whole thing. I'm like, what's going on with your I eye? Know, no, even, I, that happened to me the other night. And Chelsea Gray, she put in her contract to get her makeup done. But I'm Peasantville. Okay. So, like, I can't in here. And so I have to do my own makeup and I don't want to do it. <sighs> just being, hey, you know what? Just want to be honest. I, uh... Uh, Get back to the good stuff. Uh, how about this uh, good message yeah. from Buckhorn? Nothing about that win was impressive. Mid opponent. What? I mean, yeah, no shit. But what? What? Uh, j- j- just no. to be clear, no, no. But excuse me for a second. It's been even Car- Carlin. Oh, come here, Carl. You the paralyzed it. dog has something to say. Do you- no, no, he doesn't. Oh, okay. You don't want to come here? Okay. Well. Crawl He's away. So irritated one. by what you just said. I'm sorry, sir. Is this the first time you've watched a Kings game this year? Is this the first time you've seen the Kings team take on a team that's struggling and below 500? It's not impressive. Then here's here's a suggestion for you. Stop watching the games. I'm going to be upset with the with the win. I'm going to be upset that it was a win when the team just lost some key players. I, I don't know. It wasn't impressive. They won 127 to 106. What do you want? You want to feel bad for that? What? They should have won by 40, I'll tell you that. No, he still wouldn't have been impressed because it was oh, a Oh, it's a mid team. So, so, like, doing what you're supposed to do in winning by yeah. how much did they end up winning by? 21 points. Winning by 21 points and yeah. literally just doing what you're supposed to do isn't good enough. I get you. Hey. Life's hard, huh? There were moments that were, eh, we'll have this game. 100 Utah billion Utah came out of the third quarter, tied this game at 58, and the Kings smacked him with a 23-2 to two push and then really never looked back. All things considered, you'll take the win. Take the win. Appreciate all you guys for hanging out with us tonight. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. Carlin, Bojack in the background doing some playing. It's all good. Tonight's poll question before we get started. How are you feeling after tonight? A lot better. Trey and Sasha are back. 49% of the people. It's the Jazz whatever, 30%. And we'll see at 21%. It's so funny because going into this game, even though it's the Jazz... I still didn't have the confidence yeah. that I have felt with this team before. And I have felt with this team, the, going into game, bad games, like 
I don't know what to expect. And then I, I feel a loss anyway. Right. But this one, it was like, didn't know what to expect. And then I'm pleasantly surprised. That's a well, good feeling. To be honest, just for vibes. Welcome back. Trey Lyles and Sasha Valenga! Woo! Trey Lyles, rain in threes. Sasha steals, deflections, has a knack for the ball. And he banged in a three. Welcome back. We got some spacing again. Woo! That's you, Buckhorn. Enjoy that fog in your life. Shove that fog up your ass, huh? You take the win. You take the W. And we're kidding. You're, you could be a good person, but just like... He's not. Oh. Well, then shove it up your ass, Buckhorn! <laughs> yeah, Buckhorn, shove it up your, your ass. ass! It was good to see some beam tonight. It was good. It was good. Also, I know we'll save it for some of the pod, too, but like... No one's acting like, oh, well, the race for six is on now. You know, like perspective. There's a lot of tough games coming up, but the first thing you had to do was focus on tonight. The task at hand, baby. Yeah. The task at hand. Yes. One step at a time. That's what it's about. That's where you're at. You know, I even had someone come up to me before the game. Yeah. And they were like talking about perspective again. And they're just talking a little bit about how this team was bad for so long and then they have one good year and then everyone expects more, 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 more. And then even someone else, I, I this young fan come up or they were, yeah, they were young enough and they were talking about like, oh, well, it hasn't been that great this season. And I was like, no, no, don't ever become jaded. Like just because we all yeah. want championship seasons, like we're not there yet. So embrace Enjoy what you do have because you could be the Washington Wizards fans base and you could experience losing every night except against the Sacramento Kings. But you can <laughs> experience say. losing every single yeah. night and it could be real shitty. And we've experienced real shitty. So I'm going to I'm going to have that perspective. Again, it's not about like being like I'm okay with this, but it's about just having that perspective and understanding the development and growth of where you need to go after having your first good season. Yeah, same, I was talking to Sam Amick about that before the game, too. And he's like, yeah, I mean, look, still much better than where they were. Like, it's a, it's actually watchable basketball. So that's the good news. Anyway, I think actually the best quote, I should just say it for the pod, but I might just remind you of it tonight. Mm. I'm going to read this to you, Morgan, and just soak this quote in. You, you, this might be as good as don't make... Don't accept in victory what you wouldn't accept in defeat from Deuce Mason. Did you make up this quote? No, no, no. This is a quote from tonight. From, from somebody. From somebody. Don't be surprised if the boat's going to rock dur during the storm. It's supposed to. Life is a storm. Everything is a journey. Say it one more time because you... you I'm like going to be honest. Go fuck yourself. Oh. Okay. okay, sorry, I should have turned down my mic when I yep. said that to her. And my fuck bad. you too, <laughs> okay. buddy. Okay, let's pretend like that didn't happen. Rewind. <laughs> Don't be surprised if the boat's going to rock during the storm. It's supposed to. Life is a storm. Everything is a journey. Amen. I mean, like... That's from Moses Moody tonight. Whoa! <laughs> Young... But understands life already. That's a great quote. Man. That's awesome quote. No, I love I I love that. Nothing's supposed to be perfect. And I think sometimes when you're looking on the outside in, you you want things and people and ways to be perfect. That's just like that's just like not how life works. It's not how it works. Not how it works in sports, in your everyday job, it taking care of children, all the things. Not how it works. You're right. Well, we got a lot to talk about on the pod. We're going to have a fun podcast plan. We got to talk about this game, look ahead, and it's a return of some games to the pod. Some games. I, I forgot the name of my game. No. Oh, we're calling it, uh, the new game is called Ball is Live! Live! Yeah. We're going to have three big categories for Morgan Reagan to participate in, and maybe if this is a success, 
We bring in someone to go head to head with you one of these nights. Are you trying to be a game show host or something? Is this what you're like? Ball practicing? is live. <laughs> three big games, a part of that. Three categories. Let's talk about the real All game right. first. Do huh? some welcome now. Three, two, one. Hit my music. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. Deuce and mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce. And mo, deuce and mo, deuce and mo, the podcast that you know. Welcome into the Deuce and Mo podcast, recording this on a Sunday night. The Sacramento Kings playing without Malik Monk, Kevin Herter tonight. Malik Monk out four to six weeks. The Kings just took a gut punch when they lost two games to the Dallas Mavericks. How are they going to respond against a Utah Jazz team who had lost eight in a row? Well, the Kings got some amazing news before the game. A couple of reinforcements for the first time in a long time. Trey Lyles back in the rotation after missing so many games. His first game played since March 12th. And Sasha Vazenkov back in the fold. His first game since February 9th. Well, the Kings got some aggressiveness from other key guys and were able to handle business and beat the Utah Jazz tonight, 127 to 106. With the win, they're back in the seventh spot in the Western Conference and are now 43 and 31. This podcast is presented by our friends over in Northwest Exteriors. Check out trustnorthwest.com. I'm Deuce Mason. That's Morgan Reagan. Mo, how are you? Fantastic on a Sunday evening. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love a good win. Love a good Sunday. Feeling good, my friends. It was a good win tonight. And this is a Utah Jazz team that was starting three rookies. They're banged up. Markkinen's out. Collins was out. Of course, Jordan Clarkson's out. So this is a game you go, yeah, you, you got to win this one. But we've been down this road so been many there. times this year with the been Sacramento there. Kings. And I think everyone was curious to see how this team was going to look after the emotions of losing Malik Monk, mm -hmm. the emotions of what just transpired the last couple of games at Golden One Center, and the Kings showed some nice things tonight. This game was a bit of a roller coaster in the beginning, especially at the start of the third quarter. Utah comes out of the half, hits a couple of threes Jesus. off this bad defense from the Sacramento Kings. One, miscommunication on some help. Keegan came over and had to offer a late contest, open three, bang. And then after Sabonis was trying to draw a foul, he didn't get, he was on the ground. Jazz go a little five on four and get an open transition three. And all of a sudden the game's tied at 58. Mike Brown says, time out. And you felt some nervousness at Golden One Center. Kings come out of that huge third quarter. After that game being tied at 58, Sacramento goes on a 23-2 push, 37-19 the rest of the third quarter. They never looked back. Well done. Well done. What a great response. Because at first, I was, I was not happy. I was not even satisfied, obviously, with that first half. Mm. And then when they started the third quarter, I was just, I just felt disappointment. Yeah. And the dis disappointment turned into anger. And I remember someone trying to talk to me, and I was just like, casting up a storm like just like not not good not good and then when they responded with that type of run and did what they were supposed to be doing against this team everything got better and that's that's all you have to do sometimes like you're gonna have those games where a team comes out desperate or just like other guys have different opportunities and they're just leaving it all out there, bringing a different type of intensity like this jazz team tried to do, but the Kings became the better team out there tonight and responded to that. And the response was just absolutely fantastic, especially with the way that the response looked. I was curious to see what was going to happen with the Kings when you don't have the energy off the bench from Malik Monk, the guy that closes games for you, that's able to score 20 plus points a night, who can get you five plus assists in a game because he's that explosive. He creates so much offense for this team. Who was going to step up? I said to you after the Monk injury and in our game preview tonight, two, two guys, Harrison Barnes and Keegan Murray, they have to be aggressive. They have to look for theirs. Keegan Murray came out right away in this game and was aggressive great start for keegan murray 
Yeah. I. What are you about to say? Nothing. Is it because I messed up again? It's okay because I was Stumble McStumbleson on the broadcast in at the half, so I get it. Sometimes you got you know what I missed a couple of shots early. Yeah, just give me the ball back. But okay? like, be patient with how you are delivering your words. Like, stop trying to get to a place. Just I mean, no, no. This is coaching, not not criticism. Like, Morgan, you got like, it. You're I, one of the best in the me, game. Can like, I ask be you, one of the best. Let me ask you one question. What's up, kid? One question. What's up? Is Jokic perfect every night? No, and I don't expect perfection. I'm Jokic. I know, but like we're at the start of the podcast. Like, set the tone. It's a couple of turnovers, okay? Save it for the end. Be shitty at the end. You know, when Malik Monk went down, I'm going, who's stepping up for the Sacramento Kings? I need two guys to step up. Well, multiple guys, but the two that jumped out to me immediately are guys who could be passive. Because sometimes you go through stretches, you go, where are these guys? Harrison Barnes and Keegan Murray. And I went, Deep dive, like I was Will Z looking at stats, Ooh. going deep into the basketball reference page, searching for info to back this up. Mm. And what do you know? The Sacramento Kings are now 14 and three this season when Harrison Barnes has 17 plus points. HB tonight had 24. The Sacramento Kings are 10 and three this season when Keegan Murray takes 17 or more shots in a game. He took 18. The Sacramento Kings are 12 and 5 this season when Keegan Murray scores 20 or mm. more in a game. He did that tonight, finishing with 25 points on 5 of 12 from 3. Deuce M stats, Will Z stat of the night. We usually get a Keegan game or Barnes game, but rarely both. Tonight was the ninth time this season they both scored. 15 plus points. The Kings in those games, 9 and 0. Love that stat from Wilsey. Love your numbers from all day long that you added to the NBC broadcast and then to right now because looking at those numbers and then looking at the way those two played, it I mean, it's just it's factual. It's not just eye test like the numbers back it all up and let's start with Keegan Murray like you wanted to and the way that Keegan Murray was being aggressive from the start. It's not just about making your shots. It's about putting the ball on the ground and attacking, making sure everyone knows that you're going to be a threat out there. Like you said, he was 10 of 18 from the field, finished with 25 points, and I just love the way that he was willing and wanting to do so much more and then being able to knock down those open threes. He did not make I don't know if he made any corner threes. You and I were talking about that pregame, watching him on the floor, and you said, this has been one of his worst years for corner threes. And then the threes that he started really making were the ones, uh, the left wing extended, the right wing extended. And I just love that it just felt like he was in rhythm, felt good, felt confident. Well, one of the things I loved about him tonight, it wasn't just he was chilling on the perimeter either. Yeah, he was ready to, for those catch-and-shoot opportunities, but – one of those plays early in the first quarter, he comes off a dribble handoff with Sabonis, fakes the three, puts the ball on the floor, and goes to the rack. Be that type of aggressive. Being aggressive is not always scoring, right? Looking to score. It's putting pressure on the defense. Keegan Murray tonight was putting pressure on the defense, and if he got in the paint, he would kick it out a couple of times. In fact, Keegan Murray made some plays tonight. He had three assists. He had three assists. I'm not saying that's some groundbreaking three. number, but... It's good to see him trying to set up his Correct. teammates. And I'm sure he had the hockey assist, too, where he made the pass that led to the pass. The Kings, you hear so much. How many times have we heard Mike Brown say, spray and three, spray and three? So many three, times. Three, three. Every other sentence. It's ingrained in our brains by now. Mm -hmm. You get in the paint, you kick it out. A spray three. A lot of those opportunities happened in this game tonight, and the Kings got it done. So, Keegan, I thought overall, it was great. He had some nice mid range He had one play where he lost the ball uh -huh. when he was driving, gathered it, yes. stepped back, jumper. I thought he had an outstanding night. Still played good defense. He finished with 25 points. He also had four rebounds, three assists, 10 of 18 shooting, five of 12 from beyond the arc. That play you just mentioned, end of shot clock too, where I was like, you're scrambling. What are you going to do? And it didn't feel like just a lucky shot. It felt like he gathered himself with confidence, understanding like I got to get something good off um, after losing the basketball, got it back, and then made that little midi. Yeah, it I mean, mid-range, taking it to the rack, uh, moving without the basketball. You saw a little bit more of that. And then knocking down those threes. Seeing him do a little bit of everything on the offensive end, I go, 
And I had that same thought that some negative people had out there too, going, okay, against a mid team, against the Utah Jazz, against some G Leaguers out there. Yes, absolutely. This is what you need to do. What are you going to do when it's a Kawhi Leonard, a Paul George, sure. I, whoever the hell it is, guarding him even on Tuesday? But this. It doesn't matter because he did what he needed to do in this game, and you just hope that it translates in the rest of these games because this is what the team needs from him. You mentioned Utah not being a good team at this yeah. point. 29-46, and 46, they've lost nine in a row now in 20 of their last 23 games. So yes. they're playing a lot of young guys right now. Some guys who have some G League experience this year, they're extremely banged up. But going back to Keegan Murray for a second, yeah, the weird number with him – I was looking at cleaningtheglass.com. It's a great website for basketball nerds. I encourage you guys to check it out. Keegan Murray is shooting 30% on corner threes this year. Ooh, 30%. Okay. Everywhere else, 38%. It's just fascinating because he is, you know, the corner three is a shot that most people are pretty comfortable with. Mm -hmm. What did he shoot last year from the corner? Okay, here's the other perspective. Yeah. Last year, he was 44% from corner threes. So much better. Yeah. So much better. Yeah. All three of his misses tonight, uh, you see three of his misses are from the corner three. The The other guy I want to bring up real fast, not to spend time talking about him, yeah. but Davion Mitchell is the exact opposite from three. H Davion Mitchell's numbers are crazy. From the corner, he is shooting 49%. From three. I love it. I love it. And he's it. shooting 31% every el everywhere else. It's exact opposite. Well, and you sent me some numbers, too, just really quick on Davion well, Mitchell. Okay. Did you want to wait no, to talk I want about to talk him? Let's talk Davion a bit. I okay. was, just, I was just, just comparing those two. It's kind of crazy. But anyway, I thought Keegan looked great tonight. And that's what you need to see out of him going forward. I think sometimes, I don't know, it popped to me. I don't know how you felt watching this game. It always looks better when you're knocking down shots. The Kings hit 23s, right? They hit 20 of 40 from downtown, 50%. It did feel like the off-ball movement was great. The passing was great tonight. What? And it got me thinking, how often do the Kings get in this habit where they become too passive? Those guys, we just mentioned Keegan, HB, even Davion to a certain extent just are looking to pass instead of score, and they they kind of watch Malik do his thing. Let Malik get in the two-man game and, and get ready to catch and shoot. Or they're watching the ball go to Sabonis on the elbow. Or they're watching Fox do too much watching. They don't, like, ha they don't have the score-first mentality right. like Malik Monk does. And when you don't have that, you're exactly right. You're going to have moments where you are watching, where you are depending on, relying on someone else to get it done. You want to be a part of the equation, but you don't want to be the solution. You don't want to be the answer. And you have to be the answer sometimes. And you have to be, and you have to take that chance and sometimes be wrong because if you're not, then you're not even going to be a threat out there and people are going to know your game and know exactly what you're about. So, yeah, that happens a lot. And tonight I felt like it, it felt a little different. It felt like everyone understood and or was talked to about stepping up. The other guy who stepped up in a big way, Harrison Barnes tonight. HB finished with 24 points. What a third quarter he had. He had 16 in the third quarter. He finished 9 of 12 shooting, 5 of 7 from beyond the arc. He was looking to be aggressive in this one. Got some great catch-and-shoot opportunities as well, but he did put the ball on the floor a couple of times. I love the aggressiveness yes. from Harrison Barnes. I did find it funny in the third quarter when he was absolutely cooking. Mike Brown was getting ready to make some substitutions, and I think after Harrison hit another three, Mike was going to let him roll. But Sasha was at the table. Sasha comes in, and at the last second, HB was like trying to get back on the court because he— Guy's on fire. You don't take a guy out Never. when he's got 16 Never. in the quarter. He hasn't missed a shot, but the official said, no, Sasha's in. So he had to go back to the bench. So <laughs> annoying. It's like, you, you, you're you exactly right. Like, you just, you don't, and not to say it didn't end up being a mistake, right? It's not something that we have to talk about that damaged the rest of the game. The Kings lost the game because of that. But you're yeah. exactly right. You want to make sure you're letting someone roll, especially someone like Harrison Barnes. When he's having a game like this, He's so capable of doing this on a consistent level. And that's what bothers. It's not like, like when we talk Kevin Herter, we go streaky shooter. You know, he has his streaky nights. Like we've seen that more and more throughout these last two seasons with him. And it's fine. Like, what are the other things you can do with Harrison Barnes? 
there's so many times where it's like you you could easily be more aggressive on the offensive end with just attacking, not being a catch and shoot guy, but just yeah, attacking. But you can Morgan, elevate over guys. Sometimes too. he's not getting the ball either, and and that's sure. the other thing is the the Kings coaching staff will say it's an equal opportunity offense. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like that's been the case this year as much. I just don't. I think there are too many times where guys aren't getting touches, and that's not equal opportunity. Like so, tonight was a good example of how like. I felt like the Kings played a little bit last year. They played with some decent pace. The off-ball movement was there. I thought De'Aaron did a good job getting in the paint. De'Aaron was looking to set up teammates tonight. He had 12 assists in this game. He was really money tonight. I thought he had a great all-around game on both ends. But, yeah, I, I just felt like tonight it was more more of a balanced attack. They made sure to get other guys involved. And I think that's the key here is it can't just be Fox and Sabonis and yep. Monk. It can't just be Fox and Sabonis. And there have been too many times this year where that's been the case. And it gets predictable. And it doesn't keep the rest of the team engaged. And it's easier to defend as well. Yeah, three of your starters with over 20 points in this one, and one of them being Harrison Barnes, the other being Keegan Murray. Yep. You know, one not being named Domas Sabonis. You want to see that. You absolutely want to see that. And you don't want to just see that against a team like the Utah Jazz. But again, this is the way you start. You get it done against a team like the Utah Jazz so that you can find that momentum and find that that vibe that you may like to see on the offensive end that you want to see going forward against some of the better teams. And when you have those guys, Keegan and HB involved, Mm -hmm. and they're knocking down shots and they're putting the ball on the floor, you become harder to defend. Correct. Okay? So keep that that going. Even if you're missing shots, you're not going to knock down a combined 10 of 19 from three with HB and Keegan every night, but they got some great looks. I think another big key tonight. We're we're not we're not Fox and Sabonis yet. Oh. I feel like the two guys we got to talk to talk about are the guys that return tonight. Trey Bay, Trey Lyles back in the building, mm-hmm. and Sasha Vuzenkov back for the Sacramento Kings. I felt like it gave them a little boost. It gave them an injection of something in the something being. Some size, some desperately needed size. Some bodies. Some spacing. Some guys that know how to pass the ball, yep. too. I'm like, oh, my God. It was like a breath of fresh air to see both those guys back. What was your reaction, though, when Sasha comes in with 16 seconds to go in the first quarter, plays the rest of that quarter, okay? Yeah. And then he does not play in the second quarter. What the shit? It was what the shit? What? Why? What are we doing? Like, was... I don't I don't get... Hey. I didn't understand the game plan or, or what they were trying to... Like, why didn't you just, like roll with him into that second quarter and but to their credit they let him cook later on and i'll take it they did but they have to continue like i I get it early in the season like hey he was the speed of the game and i defensively there were some breakdowns oh yeah i understand (laughs) all that came in but you you guys signed him to like a what three-year deal now Mm -hmm. you're down guys he gives you something that you lack. I watch Sasha. Every time I watch Sasha, I go, this guy's just got a knack for the ball. I, I mean, how many times? He had that beautiful touch pass to Lyles in the corner for three. Mm-hmm. He's got a couple of deflections. He had that steal where he missed the layup. Looked like he might have gotten fouled. He comes in, hits a three. He's it, rebounding. He does everything out there. Yeah, it, it's like truly you want to talk about this high IQ player that uh, understands – where the basketball is at all times. And he obviously isn't the most athletic person out there. So he has to rely on his smarts to take him to the next level and being in his experience and playing the game for so long at such a high level, obviously in the Euro league and although his chain or his role has changed in the NBA, he has found a way to really adjust to it and been, or, you know, from what we've, the small sample size that we've seen. And he's able to be like, okay, well, I can be really good at this, or I can be really good at this. You Then you started seeing the deflections, just getting the hands in the passing lanes, causing chaos for this team. And then you would start to see him understand where he was on the floor. Would he cut in the middle, get a little touch shot, or be beyond the arc and get a nice little three, elevate over somebody. I just, I... I'm so with you where he is the type of player that needs the opportunity to play. Let him be out there. And if he starts getting cooked on the other end of the floor, 
okay, make sure you, you, you pick up his slack with whatever other defenders you do end up putting out there. You're down bodies. You're going to need him and his expertise. And even if he's not perfect out there, yeah, it's a give or take. I mean, I, I was watching the first play he comes in. He had a terrible closeout on a corner three. Just And Mike Brown's talked about closing out, right? This group, this whole team has just struggled with closeouts, and he, he, he's had to, like, go through and, like, hey, we got to teach to close out. Sasha had a couple of bad closeouts, but then like, look, he'll come in and knock down a three instantly, mm-hmm. get some life in the building. He's one of those guys too that can switch to momentum because the fans dig him. Yeah, like the fa- he's got that quick release. It's kind of fun. Knocks down a three. You mentioned what he does with active hands defensively. I I just think he has to be in your rotation consistently, and I understand. It's tough because you want to reward someone like Kessler Edwards who came in against Dallas, knocks down three threes, plays good defense. I think at this point with this current group, Sasha gives you a little more that you need to f- uh, offensively where he could space the floor, mm-hmm. he could pass it. He's a threat. And he can move without the basketball. And he in his timing, yep. uh, again, it's not that he's the fastest cutter in the world, but his timing and his ability to get his long arms up and uh, someone, a good passer like Domas Sabonis or whoever else it may be, knows to get that ball up to that hand so he can make a play, so he can do something with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely with you. So after playing 16 seconds in the first half, he finishes just under 10 minutes. He had five points, two steals, an assist, a steal on two of three shooting. He also knocked down his only three of this game. The other guy that returned, Trey Lyles. Man, Trey Trey Lyles. Again, you talk about Sasha, you talk about Trey, two guys with size. And I was like, oh, wow, Lyles, the Kings to go with small ball five. They want to every once in a while, depending on who they're facing, right? You still have Alex Lynn that you could throw out there as well as a backup five. But it was good to see Trey active, he looked like he was moving well out there, knocked down shots. He had a 11-point game off the Kings bench today. He is funny. Kyle and I got to talk to him on the post-game show. And, you know, I, I forget what – Kyle asked something about, like, you know, how how do you feel or whatever. And, he, and Trey was like, oh, you know, is this not – like, how do you guys think I did? And, you know, kind of <laughs> yeah. like, well, how do, you, you how do you think I did? It's like, I don't know. They just That jam he went for, that oh. – so, so then So then I was coming up with my next question, and I was like – I was like, well, you say, how do you think you did? I mean, I could tell you really wanted that dunk. It was like you were venting through your game. Like you just wanted to just cock that one back and throw it down. You didn't get it, but everything else like seemed aggressive, seemed like you were just in a good rhythm. And that's what was nice to see because I didn't know what to expect from him out there. And I say that with him obviously showing so much promise of what type of player he can be, what type of role player and what he can contribute off the bench. But it's been a little bit. So I just, I'm always curious what you're going to get. And what you got from Trey was someone that could stretch the floor out, be that guy to make sure that there was good spacing on the offensive end and then be that body that you needed on the defensive end. Yeah, it's tough when you lose two key guys like Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. But... (laughs) When I got to the arena today and I heard that those two were coming back, I'm like, oh, that's great. Because it was going to be rough it if was those two weren't back. Yeah. And you're missing Monk mm-hmm. and Herter. I'm looking at the bench. I'm like, that's thin. You got to go out there and compete. But that is a very thin lineup. Uh, other guys off the bench. I thought Davion had a good game. The guy had five rebounds. I love seeing that. Eight points. He had three assists. It was good to see him look to be aggressive, too. Yeah, he was being aggressive. That was fun to see. And then uh, I know you sent me something about five guys having five-plus rebounds tonight on this roster. It's just a great thing to see with everyone crashing the boards. But when you see someone like Davion Mitchell doing a little bit of everything else, especially with how efficient that he's been shooting since the All-Star break and then since the beginning of this se- or beginning of this year in 2024, it's like, yeah. Keep looking for yours, Davion. Love the way that he can drive it to the basket, get some of those floaters. I I feel like there was times last year especially, and then even in some beginning of this season, where it's like he didn't understand his timing or his finesse or the way it was coming off of his hand when he would have all his momentum going forward. I feel like his offensive game, there's so much more control to it, whether it's from beyond the arc or now into the paint. I love what he's been adding. 
And since the start of 2024, he's shooting over 40% from three, over 50% from the field. I like him to keep being aggressive. You know, without Malik Monk Morgan, yeah. like it, it, you're going to need him to look to be aggressive, especially coming off the bench. How many minutes did he play? He played 21 minutes. You know, Monk is playing more like 28, 29. Yeah. When he's playing for the Kings lately. That's what you need from Davion. And I, I, I believe he has it. And I also think he's the type of guy that now that he gets maybe more minutes consistently, he'll be able to show that. You know, I feel like he's such a rhythm player. And there's so many times during his Kings career the last couple of years where he's playing like a three-minute stint here, a two-minute stint here. It, that's hard for players to show off what they can do when they're trying to, like, do the right thing out there. Davion does need to look for his a little more, too. And... Like I keep saying, just him doing that, being aggressive can lead to other things for his teammates as well. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. And I think, I think now maybe he's going to start to understand that he needs that. He knows he needs to look for his more because that's only, excuse me. You that's okay? only, Yeah. I was like choking. Um, that's only going to create for others, create other opportunities for others and, or end up with some points on the board. Like, he is very capable of shooting the basketball and getting into the paint and making something happen. Even being an undersized guard. Like, understanding not shooting right at the rim because you're going to get blocked by seven guys or Walker Kessler or whoever, but understanding that you can go up with some floater or something in the mid-range and get it done. We do need to talk some Malik Monk in a bit. I know we did a bonus pod, a little emergency pod yesterday on the news about Malik, but... I just feel so bad for the guy. I just think about the fact that he was having his best season of his career, that he has totally revitalized his career the last three seasons, you know, starting back to when he went to L.A., then coming to Sacramento. And it just sucks that it has to end this way. Like, this is just terrible luck for this Kings team, too, as they're trying to build some sort of consistency that they're starting to get banged up. Even Sabonis tonight. Like... I know. He was grabbing that left leg, and you're like, oh, <sighs> are you okay? He kept flexing it. I'm like, are you good? Okay, it's so funny that you say that because another thing that was brought up on the postgame show, I was asked about, does Domas need, like, a full day off? He seems like he needs a full day off. And I said, yes, but no. Like, you just can't. It doesn't matter. Like, you got to come to work, and you got to get hit in the face seven times and somehow pop up, put some dirt on the bleeding that happens every single game and it sucks and it's awful and at times like it's ridiculous with some of the officiating crews when there's just arms coming across his body and then you're seeing other guys drive to the basket and have a little hand check or something and then it gets called and it's okay like I'm not again I'm not complaining about it I'm just saying factually what you can see when you look back at a game but he needs to just keep fighting through it because there was a few times tonight I felt like it was getting into his head, and I get it. Sometimes it's just going to be a little bit too much and a little bit too painful, but he's just got to keep going. Yeah, he definitely felt that a little bit tonight. Before we dive more into him, yeah, what, what do you think the Kings will miss most without Malik Monk? Mm, well, if this was last year, it'd be like his energy, his spirit. Huge thing. But now truly... It's like his offense, having that third guy is really what I feel like the Kings are going to miss down the stretch in some of these big games. Keegan and Harrison did it tonight against the Utah Jazz. Are they doing it against the Los Angeles Clippers on or Tuesday Or after night? that, you've got the Celtics, the Knicks. Yeah, the, the <laughs> list goes on, yeah. right? And so, so I go, you know, I look at this season and what he's been doing. You always say it, first team all confidence and when you don't have that in another guy, but you need to somehow pull it out of them, someone else has to be able to take over and step up. doesn't mean that Keon Ellis said this when we talked to him in the post game. He's like, you know, I'm not going to try and be Malik Monk. I'm going to just do what I need to do. And it's like, yes, but also while still taking that leap and filling that void, you're not going to have the confidence of Malik Monk. You're not going to um, be be what he was in that two-man game as shifty when you get to the rim. I get all those things, but what can you contribute with your identity that will fill in for what you're missing with him? He's won them games this year. There are stretches of this season where you're like, not only is a top three, but right now he's probably their best guy. I mean, yep. think about him closing games. Yes. And like, I can't, you know, there's been so many games recently and 
I'm probably getting confused, but it's either the Spurs or the Don't Grizzlies. I forget that when he just took over, it was like, get Malik the ball and get out of his way. It, it's definitely a huge blow for this team. And I, I am eager to see how they respond. Like tonight was a good first step against the Utah yeah. Jazz. Now I'm like, all right, what's this look like when you take on the Clippers? It, what's this look like when you take on a Knicks team that is so tough? That lost, by the way, a heartbreaker in OKC tonight ooh. against the Thunder. What's this look like you, when you take on the Celtics? You know, it's, it's going to be tough. And, and I think what's so fascinating about all of this too is that when i saw people today at golden one center the around people wearing monk jerseys and just point at it and look at me and just go sad or like depressed and down and that type of energy was there before the game like what are we gonna do feeling lost and you and i went to king's practice on Saturday afternoon, and it felt like everyone was in high spirits. Everyone was happy. Everyone was good. They were like, look, we can dwell on Malik going down. We can dwell in that last game, or we can understand what we need to do going forward and take it game by game. And that attitude alone was something that I couldn't even pull myself to get to at first. So for them to be able to, to experience everything that they experienced uh, head on, and to get to that spot, I thought was really great to see. The Kings announced yesterday he'd be reevaluated in yeah. four weeks. Yeah. So that puts you, you know, end of April ish. End of April, you guys. The, it's not good. The play in is April 16th through the 19th. Yeah. The first round starts on April 20th or maybe the 21st if you're lucky. So, you know, there is an outside chance that if you're, if, he gets reevaluated. You're in the playoffs that may be late in the first round. Or if you advance, you could get him back. But again, we're talking about reevaluated in four weeks going, hey, you're cleared for contact. Let's get you going. Like Deuce. it's it, it you gotta be careful with an injury like this. And I think he's going to be careful because he's about to be a free agent. Well, that, but also before I get to that really quick, if you're getting that far into the playoffs anyway. Or wherever, you know, wherever yeah. to the end of April, beginning of May. Like, aren't you kind of going with what you have at that point? Because you're obviously well, no, seen, not I, with someone like Malik. Okay, I, think I get I get that you, you do. don't rush him back. You don't want to put him I'm in saying. a spot where he can re-injure it and it hurts. No, no. But, in, but you also don't like you don't just like give him spots to get things going. You got to make sure that he's 100 yeah. percent by the time you'd be coming back, you know, when he is reevaluated. So what does that mean? I don't know. And you're exactly right. When you look at going into this next season, you go like money is on the table. You do not screw with that type of money. You just don't. Yeah, it's and he loves playing. So like why come back? Thank you re-aggravate it if you're not 100% or it, maybe a worse injury happens because you come back too fast. You got to be really careful with it. But it's a big blow for the Kings, no doubt. I think it's such a huge lift to get Trey and Sasha back, even from, a, from a spacing perspective, pa passing basketball IQ size. It's huge to get those two guys back for this stretch run. You got eight games to go. Let's Holy go. shit. <laughs> uh, De'Aaron Fox tonight, 24 points, 12 dimes, six assists, he also had three steals, two blocks, including a really nasty one on Colin Sexton's jumper. What mm -hmm. stood out to you about DeFox in this game? Well, I love the way that he was trying to play up on guys early on. In the backcourt, he got up, got up on Colin Sexton, forced him to put his foot on the base or on the sideline. Boom, King's ball. So I love That was really nice. That was after a King's turnover. So bonus had a turnover yes. and they got the ball to Sexton and Fox put some Came up. great pressure on him on the sideline. I love that pressure. I, th I like that pressure. I wish was there every single possession. And now with this new lineup and then with the new rotations, I feel like Fox's role is the same, but there's things about his game that has changed. And then you're even seeing on a night like tonight, having 12 assists, being that playmaker, being able to distribute the basketball and people knocking down those shots, I think it's because he becomes such a big threat every time that he attacks the paint. Every time he attacks the paint. He was two of seven from three-point land. Around that around that seven three-pointers attempted, I'm okay. Like, it's always, it's 
it's a hit or miss. You know, if they lost, maybe I'm looking at that number differently, right? But because they won, I'm looking at that. And I'm going, okay, I'm okay. There's some sure I could say that I wish he wouldn't settle because so many good things happen when he gets explosive and goes by someone. And it just, I think I texted you that. It just feels like at times like that he could drive the entire game. There was when like Micah Potter was out there. I was just like, why isn't Domas driving every single second? You know, like these guys just going at them, making sure you understand your personnel. Do not settle. And I'm always curious if it is somewhat of a tired thing and then you become tired in your legs and you become tired in your mind. So then you don't have the ability to be like, push through, crossover, go. And you're just like, hey, let's do a step back here. Wherever your yeah. mind goes, I just hope that it continues to go forward to the rim. I did think it was interesting in the first half. I felt like he was playing more off ball. That's it, what I'm saying. Yeah. Like his role kind of. I don't like him off ball all the time. I'm I, I, with I, you. And it's fun. And you're right. Maybe it's an energy thing. They're trying to like, hey, like let's have and you serve. handle more in the second half. Sure. Let's put some pressure on with defensive, pre you know, on ball pressure in this first half. I don't know. Like I, I just love the ball in his hands. Make shit happen. His speed is such a weapon. And he just has some incredible moves. I mean. There was one, defenders. I think he was on the left wing. Yeah, he like split That's defenders, yes. weaved his way into the key, and then finished with the right. Did he get the and one on there? I don't know if it was that one, but he had some just brilliant yep. moves to the basket. But him just getting in the paint and making quick decisions, whether it's looking the score at the rim or kicking out, I just want more of that. And I, I don't love him off ball. Now, it's one thing if, like, hey, the ball's going to Sabonis and they're getting some, the, some action going. But I just, I like him bringing up the ball. Now, to their defense, maybe it's this. Like, they just saw what Dallas did. Dallas, every time, like, uh, any time the Kings inbounded make uh, off uh, makes, they were putting pressure on him yeah. immediately. So then and it then, was, like, pointless at that time, right? Because then he'd be bringing the ball up and just have to give it up, where it's like if someone else is bringing it up, it's like, okay, now we're able to create for De'Aaron. But maybe. those other guys that are bringing it up need to bring it up with pace. Agreed. And I know you don't have Fox speed, but, like, Davion's not slow. Thank you. Keon's not slow. Let's get into some early offense and then get Fox the ball again and create. I'm with you. Something different that you, you got to go with going forward. Uh Especially if you're going to be seeing some postseason run. Hopefully you're seeing some postseason run. Yeah, you're going to have to change some things up. Yeah, I, I thought he was really good tonight, though. Agreed. Good night for him. Sabonis, so you're just talking about him. 17 points, 11 rebounds, 6 assists for him. He had 4 turnovers, 7 of 14 shooting for Sabonis. And I felt like he was pretty aggressive early in this game. I want to just double check one thing. He had like 3 angry-ass dunks at the rim, and I'm just... Jaw dropped. Yes, please. Can you keep doing that? And sometimes it feels like he can, but then other times they switch up things and they give him the ball in the low post and then they're like, go to work. And then you have another body come down and they throw a double and then he tries to battle through. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. if he's working it when he's going downhill, why don't we stretch him out on the floor? Not completely. I'm talking about like high post, maybe at the nail, whatever. You just give him the ball, have him square up, and so then he can go. And if someone still collapses on him right there, then he makes the quick dish. Or maybe someone's in the dunker spot and just has a little nice flex cut underneath. I don't know. Just figure it out. But whatever you're doing, I don't love all the posts, post up, double, triples, whatever, and then him try to just fight through everybody all the I time. I completely agree with you on that. By the way, he only took two shots in the second half. I was looking at that because I, oh. I remembered he was pretty aggressive in that first half looking for his. I thought he had a couple forces. He was 0 for 2 in that uh, second half. He had 2.6 rebounds, 4 assists. But on the night, Sabonis, I mentioned the double-double streak continuing. That's his 57th straight double-double. He's got 70 on the season. The other number that the TV broadcast mentioned tonight he now on the season has over a th thousand rebounds and over 600 assists. He's the second player in NBA history to do that. The last was Wilt Chamberlain, 1968. It's pretty impressive what he's been doing. The names that are surrounding him with what he's accomplishing on the basketball floor. And it's not like this is some bum basketball yeah. team. You know, it's not like, oh, he's putting up numbers, but is it translating into W's? It is. It has. In a very difficult Western conference. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's impressive. 
He doesn't get the love that he deserves, but that's why we're all here to talk about it and respect it. I was looking at the second half numbers because he was 0 for 2, but check this out. Keegan and HB. Mm. Amen. Harrison Barnes was 7 of 8 in the second half. Keegan, 4 of 9. Fox, 4 of 7. So that that's great to see those guys being, being really aggressive out there. Uh, we got more of the podcast coming up. We should mention that tonight's podcast presented by our friends over at Northwest Exteriors. If you're looking for new windows on your house, you got those old windows that you're like, God, anytime the wind blows, you hear a rattle. Oh my God. That's a sign you Been need new there. windows. Or, hey, God, it's, it gets really cold at night. There's like a draft that comes in or the summertime, that warm air. No, it ends today. Ended. Because you go to Northwest Exteriors, they got a showroom in Rancho Cordova. They're local. They don't subcontract out to anybody. Get them to your place and let them get new windows on your house. Life changing. I mean, truly, it is life changing. And sometimes it could be intimidating. Like, wait, is this what I need? Can I even afford it? Just get a free quote today. Make sure to check them out. Why, Morgan? Because they are simply the best. Trust Northwest. Thank Appreciate you. their support. The Do Simo podcast. All right. We talked a lot about, I think, pretty much everyone who played tonight. Shout out to the Kings for going to the deep bench. Mason mm -hmm. Jones and Colby Jones got in the game. Who would be your rock and soul player of the game, Morgan? Mm, I'm going to go. I could go either way, but I'm going to go with HB. I think uh, another game because we haven't seen this from him consistently all season long, but we know that he's capable of this is why I'm giving him my rock and soul player of the game. Chat, if you want to drop your rock and soul player of the game, that would be great. Mm -mm -mm. The rock and soul player of the game tonight. Yes. Oh, you split it. I had to split it, man. That's fair. That's HB fine. and Keegan. You combined for 49 points. 19 of 30 shooting. Dude. 10 of 19 from three. These guys go. are going to be huge keys for the Sacramento Kings. If they have a chance to do anything in a play-in, or in the playoffs yep. if they get there. They need these guys to be aggressive, take shots, make shots, take some pressure off of Fox and Sabonis. HB, Keegan Murray, our Rock and Soul players of the game. Make sure to check out Rock and Soul Diner. It's just six blocks away from the arena. And if you go during Kings games, if you're not actually going to the game, doesn't matter if it's a way or a home game. You can go get 25% off appetizers, 25% off drinks. Oh, and get this, Deuce Mason. Yeah. After the game on April 12th, just double-checking that day, April 12th, yes, on a Friday, huge party, DJ everything at Rock and Soul. So just go on over there after. Okay. There will be tons of deals that we'll be telling you about as well, but they also have two different murals of Deer and Fox and Domas Sabonis that they have like hanging up right now that they're going to auction off too. It's done by a local artist. Yeah, yeah. We'll get Damn. more details coming soon. Well, check out Rock and Soul Dining. Congrats to Harrison Barnes and Keegan Murray. They've been dying to win the Rock and Soul player of the game. They've been talking about it all the time. Is there a moment of this game, Morgan? A Sharif Jewelers moment of the game for you? Yeah, okay. It, I remember I almost texted you. It. Oh, God. I can't even remember it all the way. It ended with a Keegan miss three. But I feel like it was either a block or so, or maybe it was a turnover on, on Jazz. Then they pushed it up the floor. And then they got it up to Keegan Murray. Your moment of the game cannot be a missed shot that you could barely remember. I know. So and, I'm sorry. We're not doing that. Okay. No, it wasn't going to be at the moment. But I remember being like, oh, this can... I thought in my head, this is going to be the Sharif Jewelers moment of the game. And then Keegan missed the three. So... You know, a kind of sneaky, cool moment What was a second chance opportunity. It was a missed shot. Sabonis flies in there, knocks down like two guys to get a rebound, kicks out to HB who put the ball on the floor, and I believe he got fouled, and there was like a standing ovation. Like It was mm. like the Kings fans were like, that's what we have to see. Dude. We saw Sabonis get a big offensive rebound. Yep. We saw Harrison Barnes attack. That's what we need. That Those extra effort plays – Make all of the difference. Sure, that can be our Sharif Jewelers moment of the game. Make sure to check out Sharif Jewelers. So many different locations. And, hey, there's a yeah. family member always at every single one. I was just throwing that out there. I didn't say that was the moment. Oh. Yeah, I was just throwing out there. Andrew brought up a good one. What Fox kicks it to Sasha with that quick touch pass to Lyles for three. That was pretty sweet. Okay, like that. I think that's another good one. 
God, there's other ones I just like can't connect with in my brain right now. Yeah. Brain not connecting, the brain not connecting. Uh, someone's saying in the chat that the ovation was for the double double, was it? Oh. I, I think they acknowledge that too, but I think it was just the whole play. <laughs> Deuce. <laughs> I don't uh, know. Whatever. That was pretty dope. Make uh, it, Sasha making a three. Yeah. I, I'm seeing a lot of people in the chat just scanning through mentioning Terrence Davis tonight. I can't tell you how many people have been like, why don't the Kings re-sign Terrence Davis? Well, if you can help him with a new Achilles, maybe. The guy ruptured his Achilles like two months ago in, in the G, G League. League. Dude, it sucks. Like he was in the G League playing for Rip City. He had he ruptured his Achilles. He's on the road to recovery. Sad. So, it's really sad. Fox's block was pretty sh- sweet. Jim. Yep. There's no doubt about it. I love I love that we point out defensive plays for Sharif Jeweler moments of the game. I love that. Yeah. I mean, because they're huge. They're the ones that get I they get everything going. They they get the energy going. They get the crowd going. There was times tonight I was worried because it was a Hello Kitty night at Golden One Center, and I was like, "There's a lot of Hello Kitty fans here" because like it wasn't loud in between, and then a big play would happen, then you'd hear "Yeah," and then finally I I started feeling the energy again. Like one of the biggest pops of the night during a timeout when Hello Kitty did a dance number. And and can it, can we be honest? Yeah. Mid. Hello Kitty was mid. Like, slams in so much better. I have a bigger question. Uh-oh. It, this <laughs> don't, dude, don't diss Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty's cool. I'm asking, what's the appeal of Hello Kitty? It's iconic. Does Hello Kitty have a voice? Does Hello Kitty have a voice? Yeah, exactly. I don't... I don't think I just, so. I'm not, but I'm I, like, I don't know anything about not, Hello Kitty. That's fine. You didn't grow up on Hello but Kitty. I'll tell you, people were lined up. Tickets were going crazy so they can get a tote bag that had Hello Kitty in a King's jersey. I had people at NBC hitting me up being like, can you get one for my daughter? I asked. Couldn't get one. Like, because it was the first whatever Damn. people that got. And there was shirts that were being sold that sold out within minutes. And then there was also this little girl had this Hello Kitty ice cream thing with sprinkles and i was like oh my god that's so cool and someone else told me that it sold out within 10 minutes and i'm like that's insane so much for me getting ice cream um we reference a couple of plays i'll say this one thing we do have to note in this game i think we have to note that harrison barnes had 16 points in the third quarter and when you think about how fragile this game was out of the third quarter yeah sense a bot it's an open three sabonis try to go bully ball on uh, Walker Kessler, it was a turnover. He wanted the foul. He didn't get back, and then Sensabaugh buried a transition three. It's tied at 58 at that point. And then coming out of that timeout, the Kings respond with three straight threes. Fox created two of them. Another one was a Fox steal. All of a sudden, a tie game that was at 58-58 goes to 67-58. And the Kings never look back. They end up going on that 23-2 push, and they... Huge spark. Ran away with it. Huge yeah. consistency yeah. that you needed to see. And I, again, this is one of those games. The Kings did what they needed to do. And whether that upsets you because it was against a bad team in the league or not, I don't, I don't give two shits. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I'll take a win however you get it. No, no, no. It was, you got a win in the fashion that you needed this team to get a win. Especially going into a game uh, like the Clippers coming up on Tuesday. Also, w- just real fast, what? we didn't even mention Keon Ellis. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He's just always solid. Yep. Shout out to Keon Ellis. 27 minutes tonight, five points. He had eight rebounds, three assists, and a steal. Keon Ellis is a winning player. He doesn't have to score to be impactful. That's when you know you belong in the league is when you can just make shit happen. Love it. You do the little things. Because the little things are the big things. Hi. I'm, I'm Deuce, Deuce Mason. Mason. Appreciate everyone hanging out with us tonight. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. All it does is help our channel continue to grow. Uh, Morgan, up next for the Sacramento Kings. A little Ooh. visit. Oh. Morgan, I was just going to copy you saying the Los Angeles Clippers. The LA Clippers I come to Clippers. town. The Clippers come to town to take on the Kings. And we know that's always a tough matchup. Uh, the Clippers, let's just look at their last stretch of games here. Uh, they have won three in a row. They beat the Sixers. They beat the Orlando Magic. And then Sunday, they beat the Hornets 130 to 118. 
Um, so they're 47 and 27 right now on the season. And they've got a tough stretch coming up Sa- at Sacramento, then home for Denver. They still have Phoenix a couple of times. They have Houston at the end of the season. Mm. They've been up and down recently a- until this three game streak. I don't know how to feel about them long term as a team. I was starting to believe a little bit, but I with the Clippers, believe. we always go, let's we'll, we'll wait and see. I'm sorry. When I see James Harden contesting Kawhi Leonard shots, that was weird. What? That was a while ago now, like two weeks ago. I. Or like a week ago. Okay. Okay. And they responded after that by losing two in a row. They lost to the Sixers at home and they lost to the Pacers at home before winning the last three. They've been up and down. They've been pretty disappointing for the last month or so. It's still a tough game. I mean, they they have all the yeah. things that are just tough for the Kings. The size. All the things. The all, yeah. Like, what are we, we, what are we even saying? We saw how... Hard the Kings had to work to even beat them. Which game was that? That was a while back, yeah. I that was, know. yeah, I don't even know when that was. This whole season feels like a blur. But when they did, like, what they have to give to beat a team like this is a lot, is a lot. And they're missing some of their pieces. So already, it doesn't matter what we think the Clippers are and what the Clippers can do. It's what the Kings can look like against a team that has the pieces like a Kawhi Leonard, a Paul George, a James Harden. Russell Westbrook. Oh, yeah. Westbrook's back. Yep. yep. Uh, tonight, Paul George had 41 points, seven rebounds, four assists. Kawhi had 23. Zubats, 24 and 12. Harden played 36 minutes. What a weird night for him. Six points, 10 assists, six rebounds. Look at him dropping him. dimes, though. Of course. Dropping dimes. I was going to look at their numbers in March because I feel like that's when they've kind of, well, since the break, really. Yeah, I I know they've been up and down. And what's interesting to me, too, is because when you're watching a team like the Kings take on a team like the Dallas Mavericks, who are just clicking, they're vibing. And then the Kings play two games in a row against them when they're vibing most, and then they have another big win tonight. It's like, okay, I'm starting to believe where they can go toward the end of the season. I just because the Clippers have been up and down, I still don't doubt that they can be just as good as they were when they started figuring things out, I guess. You want some crazy Clippers numbers? Give them to me. Since the All-Star break. Mm-hmm. Let's play a game. Where do you think they rank defensively? <sighs> um, Since the All-Star break, let's go 15th. 28th. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, they Losers. ranked six offensively since the break. Uh, in the month of March, and during that span, by the way, they're 11 and 10 since the break. Okay. They're 11 and 10 since the break. The Kings, for perspective, are 12 and 8. Uh, in March, the Clippers, where are they at offensive rating? They're third in offense. Oh, God. Okay. And defensively, they're 26. In March. In March. Okay. Yeah. So things are good on the offensive end. We'll see, hopefully, a little bit of a shootout against <laughs> the Kings and the Clip. I mean, that's the thing. For the Kings, at times, you feel like things can click defensively. They can lock in. The effort is there. That's what you want to see. But offensively, are you making your shots? If you're Keegan Murray, are you being aggressive enough? Are you going to get a game like this from Harrison Barnes when it's the Los Angeles Clippers. It's all the things that you need. Can you have Domas go into Zubats like we have seen him do this season? It's a tough matchup too. Zubats is a strong ass dude. Um, I, I just think this this Clippers team is fragile right now. There's weird things. You got Ty Lue's contract situation, Paul George and his contract situation. In fact, there's like some Vegas odds maker who said the Kings have like the second highest odds to land Paul George if he was available for them. Interesting. But it was like Sixers and the Knicks and Kings were tied. I just think this group is kind of on the ropes a little bit. It doesn't mean that they they won't have success and win a series, but my point is this team is beatable, and I think the Kings can. If they play like they did tonight, they'll give themselves a chance. Yeah, It's obviously a little different when you're taking on a team with all that dynamic scoring. You got to be locked in. And we'll see what it looks like. But after that, they hit the road. This stretch, the final eight games for Sacramento, it's pretty brutal. There's no denying it. I mean, you've got 
the Clippers, then mm-hmm. you go on the road for four games at New York. Mm-hmm. That's on TNT. The next night at Boston. Yep. Then Sunday at Brooklyn, Tuesday at OKC before coming home for the Pelicans, the Suns, and the Blazers. It's not <laughs> going to be easy. That's not going to be easy at all. You end at home, even against the Blazers. I, I, I don't care what the Kings look like in that stretch. I don't have any expectations of what they just can one at a time, man. That's one it. At a time. That's it. One at so yeah. Screw the rest of the schedule. We're talking about the Clippers. Let's go. Well, as it stands right now, the Kings are in the seventh spot. You got yes. the Pelicans who are now dropping the six, and the Mavs with another win today. The Mavs huge smacked around the Houston Rockets, ending their long win streak. Luca was unbelievable tonight. He had like an underhand and one like long two or three point, whatever it was. It was just insane. Yeah, he had 47 points, and he only shot five free throws. <laughs> he did it on 18 of 30 shooting, 9 of 16 from downtown. They beat the Rockets tonight, 125 to 107. And everyone's been talking about the Rockets lately because they've been red hot, and they're making a push to try to get that final playing spot for, or from the uh, Golden State Warriors. But the challenge is, dude, you just win, what, 11 in a row? And you're still a game behind the Warriors coming into tonight. You have to play perfect. And it was a worst case scenario for them tonight. The Warriors won. They lost. Now they're two games back. Yep. Tough so. shit ahead. Are you ready to play a game, Morgan? Oh, I'm ready. Welcome to tonight's game, Morgan. It's a new game show called Ball is Live. Life. We have three categories. And, of course, you are the prime contestant. Thank you. But we also encourage everybody in the chat to play along at home. We got three categories to choose from, Morgan. And maybe if this is a success, we'll have you go head to head with someone in the future. Okay. Here are the categories the basketball name game, basketball birthdays, and filling up the stat sheet. That's all on tonight's edition of Ball is Live. So, Morgan, the categories basketball name game, basketball birthdays, and filling up the stat sheet what are you choosing tonight well because i haven't heard of it yet let's go filling up the stat sheet deuce okay okay here we go the first one domas sabonis leads the sacramento era with 40 triple doubles chris weber is second with 14 wow two others are tied for third with six okay name one of them If you'd like a hint, I can give you one. Sure. They were on the same team for one season. The two that had the six? Yep. It's a big time hit. Mitch Richmond? Is that going to be your final answer? Yeah. Or do you want some help from the crowd? I mean, I want help. I I don't know who the hell... Okay, we're getting some people. Oh, Boogie and Rondo. That would make maybe some sense. Yeah, let's go. Well. If you get it from the crowd, you get one of those per game if you want to use it now. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to. I just want to be right. Yeah, so Boogie and Rondo. Is it Boogie and Rondo? Yeah, Good is. job, crowd. How crazy wow. is that, though? Doma yeah. Sabonis has 40 as a king. The next closest is Chris Webber at 14, and then DeMarcus Cousins or John Rondo. That's insane. That's why, I, even when I said Mitch Richmond, I'm like, who the hell is going to have six with him, especially in that era? So, yep, good job. All right, good Morgan, job. do you want to stay with filling up the stat sheet, or would you like to move on to the basketball name game or basketball birthdays? Basketball name game. Ooh, okay, here we go. Basketball Nick, <laughs> basketball, basketball name game. This is where we give you a player. Mm hmm. And a few nicknames. One of those nicknames will be fake. Copy that. All right. How about the King's next opponent, Kawhi Leonard? His nicknames, The Claw. Know that. Uh Aha. You know his laugh? Yeah, yeah. What's a nickname, though? Boardman and Fun Guy. There's four of those out there. One of them is fake. The Claw. Or is it... (laughs) Boardman, 
Fun guy. Why would the laugh be a nickname? It's just a funny thing. I'm going to go with ha 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 ha, not a nickname. Are you sure about yeah. that? Do you want to ask the crowd? No, I don't get to ask the crowd at that. I thought I already used it. All right. Is that the fake yeah. one? Not yeah. Cool. Nice try, stupid. Yeah. I was like, that's not, there's no way. Well, the claw is definitely one. Yep. A board man, he got that nickname at San Diego State because that's all he would say. He would say, I'm a board man. Board man gets paid because he gets rebounds. And then Fun Guy actually came from that press conference where he laughed. I'm a fun guy. Uh, obviously, I love the game of basketball. Um, I mean, it's just more question you have to ask me um, in order for me to tell you about myself. I just can't give you a whole spiel. <laughs> I don't even know where you're sitting at. Like. <laughs> 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 so that's how I got the fun guy nickname. I'm a fun guy. Morgan Reagan, two for two. So... You've picked a couple of categories. You. you picked the basketball name game, filling up the stat sheet. Would you like a little basketball birthday? Hit it, bitch. Okay. Please. Happy bitch. birthday this week to an NBA champion in 2011. He played for Orlando, Utah, Washington, the Mavs, the Nets, and the Hawks. Deshaun Stevenson. Happy birthday? This week to Deshaun <laughs> Stevenson. It's a, it's, he gets a birthday? Yeah. I have no idea. No oh, idea. It's been a while since he played in the league. And remember, you just have to get within two to get the points. You already have two points right now. 58, 60. I'm, Deshaun Stevenson is 60. 70, 42. Do you remember Deshaun Stevenson? I don't. You would remember Deshaun Stevenson. You're, this is going to irritate Deshaun Stevenson. Is forty three. Show me a photo of him. You're gonna be so show me, mad yeah, at yeah, yourself. Because I'm like not there at all. Oh! <laughs> oh my God. Can you just always show me the photo first? Like cool. you have, you have to with me. You well, literally have to. Just show me their plain day photo. That's fine. In okay. honor of his birthday, we should mention this. He once called LeBron James overrated. LeBron James responded with this. He said, quote, with Deshaun Stevenson, it's kind of funny. It's almost like Jay-Z responding to a negative comment made by Soldier Boy. It doesn't make sense to respond. <laughs> Stevenson took James's comment as a chance to add some spice to the playoffs. When the series between Washington and Cleveland went to a game three, Soldier Boy was seated behind one of the baskets. And then later... Jay-Z responded to Deshaun Stevenson with a diss track. No. How about that? Wow. Fun fact. Thank you. I like that. I like that. 70. All right, Morgan. Yeah. What, what's your next category on? Ball is live. Go back to birthdays. Oh, okay. We got one more birthday to complete oh, the category. God. I hate birthdays. Happy birthday to twins. Which twins? Brooke and Robin Lopez. Oh, God. I don't even know how old they are. I know they're not 70. Of course, Robin was a member of the King. Kings for like an hour. One whole hour. Um, are they 33? 33. Remember, you have to be within two. Yeah, so I'm feeling like a good vibe from you, so. No, oh, sorry. How old sorry, are they? Sorry. 36 years old they're this that week. Old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh As you know, they're big Disney fans. They said in a 2023 story that they once rode Splash Mountain like 18 times over a 24 hour span. Dude, one of them bought one of the homes within the. Uh, what's the one called in Orlando? Disney World. Disney World, there's like only like a certain amount of homes that are sold like within the span of Disney World and one of them bought it. I'm not surprised by that. I do want to make one quick correction. It was actually 18 times over a two-hour span on Splash Mountain. Uh, also asked in 2021 how many times that they've been to a Disney park. Any guesses? <sighs> 33. Over a hundred. Wow. Over a hundred times. Wow. Happy birthday to Brooke and Robin Lopez. So basketball 
Birthdays is off the board. Thank God. Where do you like to I go hate next on? Birthdays. Ball is live. Fill up the stat sheet. Go. Fill up the stat sheet. Oh, I can't wait oh, for wait, this. Oh, wait. What was the other one? The basketball name game. Yeah, fill up the stat sheet. Okay. In 2018, this player became only the second player in NBA history to record a 2020 triple double. In 2018, this player became only the second player in NBA history to record a 2020 triple double. If you'd like a hint, I can give it to you. Hint. He won an MVP in the NBA, and we have talked about him tonight. See, I don't feel like we've talked about Jokic. In 2018. Oh, in 2018. What year is it? 2024? And the last person to do this feat, 1968, Will Chamberlain, 22 points, Ooh. 25 rebounds, 21 assists. Some, yes, that's a good one. That's who it is. It's Russell Westbrook. Is it Russell Westbrook? It has to be. Westbrook. Yeah. Yep. There good go. job. Good job. Thank you. That remind God. Yeah, he had 20 uh, points, 20 rebounds, 21 assists. Pretty impressive stuff from really Russell impressive. Westbrook. Okay, you could. we have one more in that category, or we have one more in the basketball name game. Where would you like to Fill go? Fill up the stat sheet. Fill up the stat sheet to complete the category. This is a multiple choice one. Go. How many quadruple doubles have we seen in NBA history? A, one. B, 14, C, 4, or D, 23. We're going to go A, 1. You're saying that with confidence. I know. I just don't know. So I can repeat it one more time. No, A, 1. Is it 1, 14, 4, or 23? It could be 4, but we'll just go 1. Do you want to take some? C, 4. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to hit anything. I want, you, you're just asking so quickly. Yeah, C4. You're going with C4. Just do it. Is it C4? So wow. it was one or four, you know? The NBA, just to note though, the NBA did not start recording blocks and steals uh, until the 1973-74 season. Love it. Here are the players who have done it. Nate Thurman did it in 1974. He had 22 points, 14 rebounds, 13 assists, and 12 blocks. Okay. Alvin Robertson did it in 1986, 20, 11, 10 assists, and 10 steals. Okay. Hakeem Elijah won in 1990, 18 points, 16 rebounds, 11 assists, and 10, excuse me, 11 blocks and 10 assists. And the last player to do that, David Robinson in 1994, 34 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, and 10 blocks. Amazing. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. The next one to do this, Victor Wembenyama. Ooh. In 2024-25 season. We'll do it next okay, year. cool. Note that. Wow, it, well, it's, you, you wrote it down, so it's Thank noted. You. Are you ready for one more on the basketball name yeah. game? This is it. Yeah, are you? I feel like you're being up. Stress me out, and it. You know what else stress me? The out? crowd's having fun. No, you... and I'm so glad you guys are, and I am having fun too. So the only thing that really bothers me is that, uh, my brain and my memory just it doesn't do well with a lot of things. Trivia, I mean, part of it's math, just guessing. You know, it's just for fun. sure, for sure. But like, I feel like when I'm around someone like you, and like the way that your brain connects with certain names and stats in history. Just to be clear, none of this here was like, hey, remember a stat. It was like, oh, Deuce, Russell. Deuce, I get that. I'm just like, like, do you see how I need an image? Hey, guys, I, is Morgan ruining the game right now? Yes. No, okay, we're I'm the basketball name. The game. Game. I'm just talking about my, I'm, no, we're going to let me talk. Thank you. The way that like even growing up, like I was such a visual learner and then doing games like this, I'm like, Oh my God. Like I just need visuals, but proceed. Okay. Um, so th this will be the final edition of ball is live because Morgan doesn't like the game. Wait, that's uh, the, no, no, no. <laughs> Ow, stop. No, the last one, the basketball name game is a category. We've got three nicknames. One is fake. This one 
is from a, a former member of the Utah Jazz, a okay. two-time NBA All-Star, Carlos Boozer. Okay. His nickname's Booze, yeah. the Sharpie in Booze Cruise. Oh, the Sharpie. You're just saying that because he like drew on his hair. <laughs> I'm that's... not saying it. It's a nickname that's on the sheet. But yes, he is known for painting on his face beard and, and hair. So I, I you got Booze Cruise. Let's go Booze Cruise. Booze? Final answer. No, go. Don't convince me otherwise. Booze. The Sharpie. Booze Cruise. Which one is fake? Morgan says Booze Cruise for Carlos Boozer. Oh. oh. Sorry. To it's the Sharpie, huh? The Sharpie was fake. You know, it was just like the whole oh, 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 that you tried getting me with the with the Kawhi one. I should have just gone with it, but I, I was just like. Say, I loved coming up with that. The, the <laughs> laugh was a nickname. <laughs> As as a nickname, yeah, like. Oh, oh, but oh. could you believe that even I figured that one out very I'm quickly? I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. I don't need your validation. Um, so not the sharpie. Why is it the booze cruise? Because boozer booze cruise. I don't you know. usually have an explanation. I, there wasn't one for this one. Oh my god, that's my favorite thing about the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Sorry to let you down, Mo. Thanks. Oh God. I have, like, I'm, like, sweating with anxiety. What, why does that get you so bad? Games just, like, I, like, so whenever we, so the NBA podcast on, with The Athletic, they had us on, and they had us do Kings trivia. I, like, I just stated, I was like, you guys, like, I know I'm around the Kings, and they're my lifelong team, but I'm just going to let you know right now, I don't know anything when it comes to king's trivia like you could ask me something that happened last year and i'm not gonna remember well tyler says it's more fun when mo is quizzing deuce because mo can be a smart ass while deuce has an aneurysm trying to remember who eddie house played for <laughs> yes i agree no i think i almost think like you're so much you, there's so much more of a possibility of these games of like you knowing the answer than me knowing the answer and so maybe i should start like making up the games being a, a quiz master like myself. I can be a quiz master. You think you can come up with good categories that are compelling, fun, entertaining. Okay. <laughs> I'm just asking. Um. Yeah. Do you not remember my one game that you were super excited about? No. You dick. Are you serious? Who Name this quote, whatever the <laughs> shit it was. <laughs> name this. It was great. Did you like it? It's great. Yeah, it was fun. It's a good time. I don't think we ever did that on this show. We don't. Oh, we only did a on members Patreon. only Patreon okay. thing. Yeah, but anyway, my point is like I'm I'm a great game host. I'm a great game host. Well, I'm not good at games. Shove me on Jeopardy. Oh my God, Jeopardy. Bum bum bum. I would I would probably just like sweat out and be like I don't I have zero I have negative two thousand dollars. <laughs> Um, you did a great job though. The games are amazing. I love the new game, fill in the stat sheet. That was just one category. So, that yeah. So the game is called Ball is Life. I just made that game tonight. Yes. Love, love that. That's that's gonna be our game show. And then, and then categories, the categories based off of that. Yes. And I'm thinking I'm gonna steal this and become the game host. Sure. I just tough. think you're it's not tough. I'll teach you a thing or two. No, I don't need your help. I got it. You have any final thoughts on tonight? This Kings game, anything else in life? Dude, it just it's fun to win. I enjoy winning. They got shit done against a team that they were supposed to get shit done against, but it's how they did it. And it was such a positive thing to have different bodies back. And yeah, I'm excited going forward. Yeah. You know? I'm just glad it's not back to back. So you can just like enjoy a win for more than a day before you hours. get the Clippers coming to Thank town. Thank you. Oh my God. Uh, the poll question tonight, the second one, do you like the new lighting that we have on the podcast? The options yes, no, and did not notice. 64% of people saying yes. Ooh. 26% say didn't notice. 10% saying no. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Interesting. Um, seriously, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We'll be back live again following Kings Clippers on Tuesday. And to for my final thought, yeah, man, this gave me a little more hope yeah, just man. about things and their chances. 
I here's where I'm at. I'm out. The top six thing, I'm not even top six isn't happening. And if it somehow happened, the Mavs fell apart, the Pelicans fell apart, and the Kings got hot, great. I'll be happy to be wrong. I'm just in play-in mode now. And now it's like, can you get a home play-in game? Yeah. And deal with the Suns or the Lakers or the Warriors teams that you have beaten this year. Not going to be easy, but just get a first-round series. Playoff experience matters. I had some people today... Our guy Chip in Discord saying, oh, just tank the rest of the year. Who cares? What's this uh, get bounced early mean anyway? Playoff experience matters. Another playoff series, playing shorthanded with adversity, I don't care. I want more playoff reps for every single member of the Kings roster. Agreed. I want some NBA playoff reps for Sasha. Yes. I want another one for De'Aaron Fox and Keegan Murray. I want Sabonis to have an opportunity again. Those things matter. So getting that play in, and let's have some fun. Anyway, we love you guys so much. But we got to go. You all have a wonderful rest of your evening. See ya! Deuce and mo, Deuce and mo, Deuce and mo. They tell you what they know. Deuce and mo, Deuce and mo, Deuce and mo. The podcast that you know. Deuce